The multiple of pre-tax profit that Berkshire paid for minority interests of Marmon and Iskar in 2013 were considerably higher than the multiples Berkshire paid for earlier purchases of majority stakes in those two firms. Can you please explain why the valuation formulas changed? Why the multiples weren't fixed for future increases in Berkshire's stake, which at least in Marmon's case were always contemplated? And why Berkshire was willing to accept meaningfully lower returns on the more recent purchases, not so many years after the first purchases? Well, the multiple with this car was actually determined precisely on the basis of which the original purchase was made. In other words, when we made the deal, in 2006, we, we took multiples of earnings and, and allowed for cash and a few things. But, uh, and then we took that formula uh, and we stuck that in as both a put and call option uh, for the family or Berkshire. Uh, they had the put, we had the call. And we stuck that in uh, to govern things for uh, you know, between now and Judgment Day. And so that there's no variation from the original formula. Uh, we would never, shouldn't say never, but we had, our style would not be ever to call that from the family, even though we had the right to do it. The put and call were at the same price, or the same, following the same formula. Uh, but the, the family elected to put it to us, but they put it to us exactly on the same basis as uh, what was involved in the original purchase of the 80%. The Marmon deal is entirely different. The Marmon deal was an installment sale. And in effect, to make the deal and buy the originals turned out to be 64%. We intended it to be 60, but gave them the option to, to, to do more. That was simply an installment sale. And we looked at the consequences of the formulas being applied in the future, the, the family would not have sold us the 64%, which they did on the original piece, unless they had the formula applying to the second and third piece that was embodied in the contract. And we looked at that as a single transaction, knowing that if the business improved, we would be paying more money, and as the cash position improved, we'd be paying more money later on. But it was all built into the original deal. So. Uh, one was, one, uh, one was at exactly the same price, and one was part of a, a three-step deal, in effect. Charlie? But the price went up because the value went up. Yeah, but it was, and, and because it was built in the... Uh, yeah, you know, and we'd, we'd agreed to that, that would be, we'd pay value. In both cases, I, I should say, too, both with the Pritz, Pritzker family at Marmon and with the Wertheimer family at Ishkar, it, it couldn't have been, they couldn't have behaved better. Uh, or the, the feelings are entirely good. Everybody felt good about the transaction, the initial transaction and the subsequent transaction. So it, it, it pays to have, to have deals in which people feel good when they, well, they Nothing go. that happened there is that we got just an enormous respect for the intelligence of those two families. The more we looked at those businesses, the smarter and better those families looked. It was just amazing what each family had done, wouldn't you say, Warren? Right, right. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. And those were two important acquisitions. I mean, they, they, you know, they, end, they add up to lots of intrinsic value. And, and they're partly because of some accounting peculiarities, but the, the carrying value of the businesses is well below what the intrinsic business value is now. And by the way, that Union tank car that's within Marmon is John D. Rockefeller's old business. The first John D. Rockefeller. It's amazing how some of these good businesses have lasted. Yeah. Well, actually, the corporate form, the, 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 the original corporation that is Marmon, I'm quite sure, is Rockwood and Company, which I did a cocoa arbitrage with in 1950 or something, and that's where I met Jay Pritzker. So you know, these things wind their way along. You, you, one thing you learn in life, but also learn particularly in business, is that you're going to meet a lot of people and entities and experiences uh, in the future that uh, you may have thought were one shot, one, 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 one uh, stop shops uh, originally in your life.